Hello, Legacy Sabers, Marsh here. So today we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions. Um, you're going to want to have your notes, pen or pencil, and then a calculator, but that's just going to be to do very, very simple multiplication and addition. So first, we need to talk about the rules. We need to know the rules. When multiplying fractions, first thing, remember, is to you need to multiply a cross. So we would multiply the numerators, multiply denominators, and then simplify, right? So 1 times 1, we get 1. 4 times 5 is 20. And then I check, can I simplify my answer? 1 over 20? No, we can't. Divide fractions, we flip the second fraction, make it a reciprocal, and change it to multiplication. Um, long ago in a galaxy far, far away in middle school, you may have learned this as keep, switch, flip, or keep, switch, flop. Um, this is how we find it. So we're going to keep the first part, switch to multiplication, and then change the other one, reciprocal, the other the second fraction. And then it's just multiplying again. So you multiply numerators, 1 times 5, multiply denominators by force, and then check, can we simplify? Because that's one thing we always want to check. Can we simplify our answers as we're working at it? Now, we're not going to be doing just numbers, of course, with our t expressions today. We're going to actually have variables in it. Let's try our first problem. 2x squared yz over 7x cubed z times 2yz over 4xy squared. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a cross and multiply a cross. So I'm going to go 2 times 2 is 4. x squared no x squared, so I'm just, or no x's, excuse me, so I'm just going to copy it. y times y is y squared, and z times z is z squared. I'm going to put a z across through it so that I can know which one it is. Now let's multiply the denominator. 7 times 4 is 28. x cubed times x, that would be x to the fourth, right, because that's four x's in total. Um, y squared, and then a single z. Now, I need to simplify this big giant fraction. I see a 4 over a 28. I can simplify that fraction. Both of them can be to 4 divided into them. So I'm going to divide a 4 into both. That's going to give me, I'm going to go over here, 1 over 7, right? Um, now I'm going to check my x's. x squared over x to the fourth. Well, technically x squared, that's just x and an x, right? And then x to the fourth is just four x's over one another. Well, ultimately I can cancel out, right? Just like we were simplifying last time we discussed. So if I cancel out an x and an x, and I cancel out an x and an x, because they're literally on top of one another, I'll just have two x's on the bottom a.k.a. x squared down there. Um, I have a y squared over a y squared. They're just going to cancel out, right? Then I have a z squared over a z. Well, that means I have two z's on top and a z on the bottom, which would mean I would have one z left on top after I cancel. For a final answer of 1z over 7x squared. Now, this one is a little bit different than the most of the problems we're going to look at. Most of the problems we're going to look at look something like this. Now, before you're like, oh, my Lord, Marsh, do you mean I have to multiply that stuff? No, that is the first thing you do not want to do. Actually, the first thing you want to do on every single one of these problems that looks something like this is you want to factor. So every time, step one, factor, factor, factor. Factor. Factor everything and anything you can. So I'm going to factor all of my numerators and all of my denominators. So 4x squared minus 4x, I notice there's a GCF of 4x, so I'm going to factor that out, and I'm going to be left with x minus 1. So that is what that numerator is factored. Let's factor this denominator. Um, it is three terms, which makes me think that I'm going to have to use trinomial factoring. Um, two things that make x squared when multiplied is an x and an x. Two things that multiply to give me 3 are a 3 and a 1. I'm going to multiply my outsides. 1 times x is x, or 1x. 
3 times x is 3x. Um, a positive 3x and a negative 1x will give me a positive 2x, like I was hoping. So I'm going to add my signs. So now I have simplified, factored that denominator. Let's do the same thing with this fraction. Um, again, another three terms, so I'm going to use trinomial factoring. Two things that multiply to give me x squared is x and x. Two, two things to multiply to give me 6, probably a 3 and a 2. Uh, multiply outsides, I get 2x. Multiply insides, I get 3x. I need a positive 1 when I add. Yeah, I can do that. A positive 3 and a negative 2 will do that. And that'll give me that negative 6 like we were looking for. Okay, factor that. And a 4x cannot factor. Now, here is the rules of multiplying rational expressions. I can cancel things that are up and down and diagonal to one another. Because think about it. If it's diagonal, at one point it will be on top of one another because I'd be multiplying, right? So if I'm diagonal, I can cancel. And if I'm on top, numerator, denominator, I can also simplify. So first thing, I'm going to change my pen color here so we can get all the different colors here. Merp, red. Um, first thing I see is a 4x here and a 4x diagonally. So I'm going to cancel those guys out. So 4x and this 4x are going to cancel. Um, I have an x minus 1 on top of an x minus 1. That can simplify. And I also have this x plus 3 and an x plus 3 diagonal. Now I'm going to see, clear the dust here and see what's left. Um, an x minus 2 on top. And that's it. That's the answer of my problem. Quite a bit, right? So factor everybody, cancel what you can up and down and diagonally. Let's try another problem. Huh. The second problem doesn't look, or the second thing doesn't look like a fraction. Um, let's put it over 1. That way we can see that fraction. Otherwise, it's going to cause a problem here later. Now, again, factor, 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 factor. Let's factor everything. This numerator cannot go factoring anymore. x squared minus 4, though, can. That's a difference of perfect squares, I believe. x plus 2, x minus 2. There we go. Cancel. Simplify that out since I've, or scratch that out since I simplified. x squared plus 6x plus 9, that is a trinomial factoring. Um, x times x will give me x squared. Things that make 9 when multiplied are 3 and 3. And I need a positive 6x, so double positives. 1 cannot be simplified. Okay, so now I'm going to go, I'm going to change into my color. Let us simplify what we can. x plus 2s are up and down from one another. Well, that's kind of sad. I don't think I can do anything else. Let's write what's left. Um, x plus 3, x plus 3 on the numerator is still left behind. And I do also have a 1, but really the 1 doesn't matter, right? And then I have an x minus 2 down here. Um, I could also shorthand this and write x plus 3 quantity squared over x minus 2 for a final answer. Both of these would be acceptable, though, for an answer there. Um, you don't need to FOIL the answer, and actually I would rather hope you don't because it's going to take you a lot longer. And sometimes, a lot of times, um, when we get further in our academic studies of rational expressions and rational functions, you're not going to want to foil it once you get your final simplified answer. Now, division. Just like when we divided with numbers, we had to flip that second. We have to do with a reciprocal of the second fraction, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this second fraction around when we do our factoring. So just like last time, we're still just going to factor first. So 2x, he looks awesome. We're going to leave him like that. 3x minus 12, there is a GCF, so let's factor that out. I'm going to cancel this out. There we go. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this to multiplication, so I'm going to go put a big giant dot right there. And then I'm going to 
factor the numerator, but write that on the denominator. So x squared minus 2x, that factors into x, x minus 2. I just took out the GCF there. I'm going to scribble that out. Then I'm going to factor the denominator, which is going to become the numerator, right? Um, x times x will give me x squared. Uh, 4 and 2 will give me an 8. And both negative will give me a negative 6x. And again, we are going to cancel what we can. Um, I have an x minus 4 up here and an x minus 4 down here. I have an x minus 2 down here and an x minus 2 up there. Um, you know what? I think I need to rewrite what we have. Um, 2x is still up top. And we have a 3 and an x. Ooh, you know what? I'm not done because I see these x's canceling because I have an x on top and an x on bottom. So they can actually simplify further. And I will be left with 2 thirds. Now, be very careful. Something to keep in mind. x minus 2 over x minus 3. Those x's cannot cancel. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. Okay, because x minus 2 is a unit. It is an entire factor, and that's why we can't break it apart. Now, there is a difference between this or that and this because these x's are multiplied. Multiplication can be simplified in that manner. Just be careful. Factor, don't kill kittens, okay? Let's try another one. Whew, this one looks like a big guy. Again, let's put this guy over 1. Um, it looks like this guy will simplify with an x squared being factored out. Like that. Got to change this to multiplication. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, erase that. We're going to take care of the this in the inside. We're going to take care of the parentheses first, and then we're going to take care of it. Um, let's factor x squared minus 9. That, I believe, is x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay. Um, x plus 10 doesn't simplify. x squared plus 7x plus 12, I think, does, though. x and x, 4 and 3, will give us a 12. Both plus will give me a 7x. So I'm going to scribble out. Um, let's simplify what's inside there. So x plus 3s can simplify out. Uh, nobody else, though. So that in the parentheses is technically x minus 3, x plus 10, and x plus 4, x plus 3. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite what we have. X, ooh, x plus 3, x cubed, plus jeepers. My pen doesn't want to write what I want it to write. Plus 10x squared over 1, and we are dividing. Now I'm going to simplify or factor that expression like we wanted to earlier. x squared times the quantity x plus 10 is what that factors into. I now need to change to multiplication, so that means I'm going to have um, x plus 3 up top, x plus 4 on top, and x minus 3, x plus 10 on the bottom. So I'm going to scribble those out. Now um, I'm now able to cross-cancel once again, so x plus 10s are going to cancel out. I think that's the final answer. So I'm going to have left on the numerator an x squared, an x plus 3, an x plus 4 over an x minus 3. Disgusting? Yep. Is it the simplified answer? Indeed it is. Nothing else can simplify. And that is the end of this video. Something to keep in mind. If you see a problem that looks very similar, for example, 
maybe you would see a problem that has an x plus 3 on top and a negative x plus 3 on bottom. Or, excuse me, negative x minus 3 on bottom. Something to keep in mind is this denominator here can, in fact, factor with a negative 1, which would give you an x plus 3, which would allow those x plus 3s to cancel. So do keep that in mind if you are working on problems today and you are seeing something that looks suspiciously similar to other things, um, you may find that it does, in fact, factor for you to make it a little bit easier.